Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on converting variables into T-scores using Microsoft Excel. A T-score is a standardized score, which is fairly common in counseling research. Oftentimes, psychometric instruments have a way to convert the raw score produced by the instrument into a T-score. Now, a T-score is a score that has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10 and allows us to compare the results from different instruments. So I have here some fictitious data in this Excel worksheet. I have an ID and these represent participants in a study. So each number identifies a participant. And then I have a post-test one. Let's just say this is a test of achievement. And then post-test two Let's say this also is a test of achievement, measuring the same construct, but it's a different instrument. So, for example, both of these scores represent points on the corresponding instrument. So, for participant 1001, they earned 41 points on post-test 1 and 195 points on post-test 2. But without standardizing these scores, we don't know which one is actually higher, which one represents more achievement. Uh, numerically, post-test 2 is higher, but that doesn't mean that it represents a higher score necessarily. So to convert these two variables into t-scores, we're going to need to first convert them into z-scores. So a z-score is a standardized score that has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So I'm going to calculate a few metrics first that will help me to calculate a z-score and then some other metrics that I'd like to calculate just to get an idea of other properties of the data. So let's start with the post-test 1 standard deviation. Now for this example I'm going to be using population standard deviation as opposed to sample standard deviation. So I'll start with equal sign and then it's going to be stdev.p. That's population standard deviation. I'm going to select the range for post-test 1. And up in the function bar, I'm just going to press F4 for the beginning and end of that range. That's going to make that an absolute reference. So you can see there's the standard deviation for post-test 1. If I autofill to the right and move into this function, I can just drag this whole range over one, select the post-test 2 range, and now I have the standard deviation for post-test 2. Since this range is uh, abs an absolute reference, I can auto-fill down, and for mean, just change standard deviation to average. Average is 43.825. I can do the same thing here for post-test 2, just auto-fill down and change to average. So as you can see, making the range an absolute reference is convenient for quickly filling out the metrics we need. Now what I have here, plus the actual scores, that's all we need for a z-score, but I like to know the minimum and maximum values as well as the range. So I'm just going to auto-fill down here minimum value instead of average will be MIN. So we can see we have a minimum value in post-test 1 of 30. We do the same thing here for post-test 2. And then again for maximum except instead of min it'll be max. That's the function for maximum value. And then the same thing for post-test 2. And for range, uh, we need to subtract the minimum value from the maximum value. So it will be maximum value minus minimum value. You see the range is 31. We'll Auto fill. And we can see the range is 77 for post test 2. So now let's move over and calculate the z scores for each variable. And in Excel, that's standardize. That's the function, standardize. And it requires three arguments. Uh, the observation, 
in this case B2. The mean, which for post-test 1 we know is cell K8. And I'm going to make that an absolute reference by pressing F4. And then the standard deviation, which is K7. And again, I'll make that an absolute reference. So negative 0.33 is the z-score for post-test 1. Now I want to calculate the z-score for post-test 2. And of course, I'll do that in the same way. Standardize, except this time I'll be using the post-test 2 value. And of course, the mean from post-test 2. And the standard deviation from post-test 2. So 0.25 is the z-score for post-test 2. I'm just going to autofill all this, all these scores. Now we have the z-scores for all of the participants. So from this point, calculating the t-score is relatively straightforward. Now we know that in a z-score, the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. In a t-score, the mean is 50 and the standard deviation is 10. So to convert a z-score into a t-score, we'll use this function. So first we'll take the z-score and we'll multiply that value by 10. That'll adjust for the standard deviation. We'll put that in parentheses because I want to add 50 to adjust for the difference in the means the mean of 0 for the z-score and the mean of 50 for the t-test. So I'll hit enter and you can see that is the t-score for the first record in post-test 1. 46.63 and for post-test 2 I'll do the same thing. I'll start equal sign parenthesis and take the z post-test 2 score and multiply that as an asterisk, multiply that by 10, and add 50. And again, I'm going to autofill this all the way down. So now we have t scores for post test 1 and for post test 2. So this allows us to make comparisons between the scores from post-test 1 and post-test 2. Uh, it was difficult here uh, because these are points and these are different instruments. Right? So the points mean something different on each instrument. But because the construct is the same, uh, they can be compared. We just have to standardize. So using either the z-score or the t-score, of course, we can uh, see which one is greater, so in the example 1 here, 41 and 195, uh, the 195 represents a higher score of achievement on this test, a t-score of 52 compared to uh, 46. And then for the case 2 here, 1002, uh, the t-score for post-test 2 is actually lower than the t-score for post-test 1. The 60 points here compared to the 204 points here, the 60 represents a higher t-score, almost two full standard deviations above the mean, whereas the t-score for post-test 2 isn't quite one standard deviation above the mean. I hope you found this video on converting variables into t-scores to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.